when you get together with somebody and you find somebody that you feel like you really like connect with in every element and then their passion changes or their direction changes or they they close the door to something that you were passionate what do you do with that yeah. Um, this one is from Ada Lipsky. Um, hello from Wisconsin. I'm starting to trust my instincts. However, I'm noticing that I'm blocking possibilities. Not sure what is happening. Thoughts? Ooh, I'm going to need some more detail. Blocking possibilities. She's single and possibilities of finding a relationship perhaps. Why don't we answer it from that perspective? Okay. So well, may, may, Maybe like I have an instinct to do this, but I worry if my instincts are pulling me in a direction that now I'm closing the doors to other things. Well, that's a whole nother angle. That's which, how I interpret it. So if, if that's how we're going to go, I think that's critical. Shutting, right? You're in a room with a thousand doors. Your job is to shut 999 of them. Like that's the job. Um, if you're going to lead your own life, that's really what it's about. And leadership is is more about the doors you close than the doors that you open and go through. Um, and so really understanding which ones to not pursue is, is critical. And... You, Going back to the example that I gave earlier of having a goal and the goal was to control my art and the irony being that for essentially 15 years, so a decade and a half, I shut the door on um, writing, directing, filmmaking, all of that to focus on getting control of the resources, learning to really be an entrepreneur that can execute at a high level so that, and I look at the beginning, I didn't like really have the crystal clear vision that I have now of the need to build the actual studio ourselves. Mm. I don't want to mislead people, but following that goal of wanting to control the resources, wanting to control the resources that I could control the art. And then knowing that I had to put that other stuff aside and there was another skill set that I had to learn and being disciplined in order to do that, that was shutting doors. And that was shutting what was arguably the most difficult door for me to shut. And if you remember, um, sort of in the early days of that, when we did Danny, and That's I was- That's a movie. Yeah, uh, that we did together based on a play <clears throat> called Danny in the Deep Blue Sea, um, which we could never show, even though I'm quite proud of it because it's based on copyrighted material, but it was really a good um, exercise for us behind the scenes to be building something. And I remember it was the first time in my life where I was sleeping between 30 minutes and two hours without an alarm day after day after day. It was surreal to me because I was so excited about what I was doing because that was when I was editing. I was so excited to like bring it all together um, that I, I literally wasn't sleeping. I was just that amped up about it. And still at the end of that process, realizing I have to shut that door. Well, as a relationship, let's, let's talk about that because we had bonded over filmmaking mm -hmm. and part of the dream when we first met was we were going to make movies. You know, for me, I wanted it like ever since I was, I don't know, 13, I had told myself I wanted to be the first female um, filmmaker to win an Academy Award for Best Director. Right. And I, so I was really young with this dream, came to America, fell in love with an American who was into filmmaking. I mean, like, it was like the dream come true. Like, we were going to get into film, we're going to be excited. Thank you. Sorry, just sniffling a bit. We were going to be excited about this future of filmmaking together. Um, and we'd made this film like, oh my God, it's actually happening. Like we put our own money into it. Like this is super exciting. And then you then turned a corner and was like, I'm going to go into entrepreneurship, not into filmmaking. And that was the door you were temporarily closing. That was kind of hard for me to deal with because this was a dream that we had gotten together, mm -hmm. together over, that we had bonded over, that for a few years we were really going down that path together and now you were taking a hard right. And the hard right for you was eventually to come back to filmmaking and earning money so that we could fund our own movies. But it seemed so far-fetched in that moment that I was a little heartbroken. And then that had, I had to then find my way because you'd gone in hardcore into business. And so what did that mean for me? And I had to then assess. And I think that's really important because when you get together with somebody and you find somebody that you feel like you really like connect with in every element and then their passion changes or their direction changes or they, they close the door to something that you were passionate, what do you do with that? Yeah. And I think for me, it was important to know I had to support you no matter what. Just like 
taken away the selfishness of what I wanted, this is what you wanted. And as your partner, as your wife, I had to support you 100%. And then I had to figure out what that meant for me. But I couldn't blend the two together because that wouldn't have been fair for you. And so if that meant, okay, you're going into entrepreneurship, I went into doing photography on movie sets. Mm. And so I was like, okay, I'm still going to pursue this. And so that may take us onto different paths for now, but I need to keep following my dream. And I want to be on movie sets and I want to have more of that experience. And so I think that's really important to kind of address. Definitely. No, and I love that. And you were insanely supportive of me without losing yourself. And that was something that you really, like you talk about the things that I sort of drew a line in the sand over. I remember on our first date, one of the things you drew a line in the sand on was I'll never lose myself in a relationship. And I remember thinking, that's kind of like, I had never lost myself in a relationship, so I didn't really know. But like you see it in enough TV and movie show, uh, TV shows and movies that it's like, I get this is a thing that happens to people. So for you to be like, yeah, I've done that in the past. I will never do it again. And which, by the way, is a really smart place. When you were talking earlier about, you know, when women come out of a relationship that's negative and they plant the flag and it's like never again. Um, and they're, now they're going to be dominant and assertive. I was thinking to myself, that's the wrong place to put the bright line. But I get the desire for a bright line. And now when you're talking about this, it makes me realize the bright line they should be setting is the one that you set, which is I'll never lose myself to a relationship again. That doesn't mean that I won't give myself to a relationship. Mm. Doesn't mean that I won't um, lead sometimes, follow others, find a dynamic that works in the relationship. Because I don't think it's a hard and fast, like guys always lead and, and women always follow, even when it's you know two really strong people. Um, that's certainly the only dynamic that I'm comfortable in, but it's not... That dynamic isn't comfortable for me because I'm a man. It's comfortable for me because that's internally like what's present um, and what I want for myself. But knowing that, hey, I'm not going to lose myself to this, um, I thought, all right, I respect that. Like, and isn't it interesting that even now we use the word lose? Like really you can't lose anything. You let it go. Sure. I mean, you know, we, I fall prey to using that word, but it's... it. If as long as you're conscious of it, I don't think it can happen overnight. And I think that, um, yeah, you need to kind of assess and which I think. Well, so here's an interesting thing, because I think it happens way faster than you would think for most people, because the number one DM I get has got to be, how do you find your passion? Which right. is why I'm now more and more on a tirade about like, you don't find it, you you develop it. Which like is what made me think it. of you don't lose it, you give it up. Well, but I think that most people don't have anything to give up. They don't have a sense of identity. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they want. They don't have a strong sense of, of path and course and purpose. And because they don't have that, they get swept up in, in the person who has more of that, whatever that may be. And I think that either a man or a woman could get caught up in that if they don't, like, haven't taken the time to define who they are. They haven't taken the time to create a passion. They haven't created a why. They haven't decided on something. They're still in the room with all thousand doors open, so nothing feels like them. There's no sense of identity. And when you walk through a door, it becomes part of you. It becomes part of your identity. Mm -hmm. But until you make a choice, you really don't have anything and so it'd be very easy like god can imagine for a second me as i am now getting involved in a relationship with a 23 or 24 year old that they they would just get eaten by my momentum a hundred percent and so when i think to how people that haven't taken the time to define that and create it and and really build something around that the second they meet somebody that has more momentum, more clarity, more drive, mm -hmm. first of all, that clarity and purpose is intoxicating. And if it can't be yours, it probably is more enjoyable to just get caught up in theirs. Like there's actual real um, joy in that. And I could say, and I don't even say it negatively that I would sweep somebody up. Um, but man, if then something happened to me or something happened to the relationship, they would find themselves going, who am I? right? Who am I without this person? I even think of that a lot with you. Like the thing that I would struggle the most with if you died, because we would never break up. The, the thing that I would struggle most with is who am I without you? Like I've worked hard 
to come together to to make the connective tissue between us so strong we've actively done that 100 yeah. percent. that and that is why i think that we would never break up because we've built so much connective tissue emotionally psychologically everything um but it would be hard if something happened to you to have to then it would be like losing a limb. Like you yeah, have to redefine we, everything yeah. in your life, how you function, how you get along, remapping your body. I mean, that's where phantom limb syndrome comes from. Your, your brain doesn't, or your brain actually does begin to remap that, but there's still a map for it that exists. And it's, uh, I don't, don't want to derail, but I mean, it's utterly fascinating where your fingers that are missing can be like refound on your face and uh, it's just nuts. So like really understanding how to deal with that that loss and and the need to redefine remap yourself is yeah because i hear a lot from people like oh i used to love going to the gym and you know i used to work out all the time and then i met this guy or i met this woman and i just got lost in that relationship and then i didn't work out anymore i put on a ton of weight and now i have to find myself again um, I think it really is going into a relationship like what is important to you and what are the things that for you, you, you have to keep for yourself and make sure that you don't let go of those things. Right. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I think that we could have easily have got lost in, um, you know, the relationship and the whirlwind of romance. Um, but it really is important to know, like, you've got certain things that are just for you and you know, now it's like whether you're here or whether you're not, whether you're traveling or whether we're together, um, there is like working out, right, on vacation. There are certain things that's like, I really want to do this. And, you know, having the support from the other person is really important. And Word.